what a nice finish that is. Hello Internet, I'm Guy. When I watch other people's YouTube videos, particularly those that do machining, like Adam Savage uh, will do some machining on his big mill and lathe, uh, inheritance machining and uh, blondie hacks, I often notice that they have tools that I don't have. And so what I do then is I go on the internet and research those tools and find the most affordable one that will fit my machine. So case in point, um, today I'm going to be using my boring bar for the first time. It's actually been sitting in my tool chest for months and I just never got around to getting used to that tool. Uh, same goes for the silver and Deming drill bits that set that I bought a while ago. I haven't really used them, they're just sitting there. So in today's video, I'm just going to be drilling a couple of big holes and exploring uh, the parameters of using these tools. So uh, enjoy the ride with me and maybe you'll learn something if you don't already have these tools. Um, I've certainly learned a lot. Okay, so let's start by getting this piece of metal mounted in the vise. We've got a couple of parallels here and some parallel holders, little magnetic holders that will clip in there and hold that in place so it doesn't fall over. I'll link to a video below that I made about how I made these. They're very handy. So now I'm going to set this over here on the parallels. Tighten that down in the vise. And then center up on that hole, on that divot that I made there. So let's see, a little bit over there. And I'm ready to drill a hole. <coughs> Okay, that's step one. Okay, so I've got a quarter inch starting hole and now I'm going to be using the Irwin uh, step drill. I'm going to put a little cutting oil on here. Excuse that little rattle there. A little bit of cutting oil and using a relatively low speed. It just slides in there really nicely. I'm hardly applying any pressure at all. Let me stop and clear for a moment. Get those chips out of the way. And we'll do some more. And that will happen occasionally because you have such a large diameter going here. That's my belt slipping on the belt drive, which is a good thing. So let's apply a little bit more lube right here. And I'm going to tension up my belt a little bit too. All right. Hmm. I guess I need even more belt tension. Shooting for three quarter inch here. Okay, I realize the drill bit might be hitting the edge of the vise here, so I'm going to loosen it up and reposition everything. So drive it towards the center of the vise. Now I know I can drill all the way through there, I believe. Well, we'll see how that plays. So now the advantage of an Irwin speed bore bit or a, any step drill is you can just drop the drill right into your hole and realign your concentricity so it's perfectly concentric to the original hole. So here we go again. Wow, that stalled the motor on my machine. That uh, is unusual. Okay. 
So now we're all the way through. But that is only a three quarter inch hole. And we want to go bigger. Okay, so now this is a step drill not made by Irwin. This is a clone bit with the uh, nitride coating, I believe. So we're going to give this a try and see how much this uh, motor can handle going up a little bit further here. So we're going to start all the way at the bottom and work up in steps as per normal. It's gliding in there very nicely, aside from those brief stalls there. Let's just stop and clear chips. One of the nice things about the step drills is they all create a chamfer. You see that nice shiny chamfer there? So you don't have to chamfer your holes. But we're going to go for a two inch hole here and that's bigger than this drill bit. So we're going to go up a few more steps and then we're going to switch out to the boring bar. Well, I lost track. It looks like I've gone to one and a quarter inch there, which is bigger than my biggest silver and Deming drill bit, which is one inch diameter. So I guess we have to go to the boring bar for the next part. So this is the affordable boring bar set that I bought with an R8 shank for my mill. Um, as most people know who might have used one, but if you haven't, you wouldn't know this. You can put the cutter in either this location, this location, or this location. Now, I don't think my mill has enough power to run it this large a diameter. In fact, it barely has enough power to do this diameter, as you'll see in the video. However, for smaller diameters, um, this might work really well and particularly with a long boring bar, that might be a useful uh, aspect for my particular needs. So let's just jump right in here. So I'm adjusting the boring bar now to a fairly shallow cut. We'll start out with that. I'm going to lock that down. All right, now let's see how that's gonna play. I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on there. over guy here. I'm learning that I'm making too deep of a cut, in other words too large of a radius, and I think I have the angle of the cutter a bit off, so I'm going to have to change that too. Okay, so this is a much shallower cut as far as the radius is concerned. I brought the cutter head in a little bit. Learning as I go. voiceover guy here again. It looks like I'm still trying to make too large a radius cut. So this cut is taking off about 60 thou and it's still too much. Okay, so now I'm setting the radius of the cut that I'm taking off to less than 50 thou and I think this will work. I'm going about 700 RPM here. That's cutting really well so far. Yep. a stall. So what I'm learning here is to take off much smaller chunks here. So I'm going to just bump out about a sixteenth or so right there. 
And again, I'm going around 700 RPM. That seems to be the good speed. Other people might disagree with me. Yeah, that went a lot easier, and it's a much nicer looking cut. All right, so patience and shallow cuts. So I am up to one and three eighths, a little over, and I'm shooting for two inches. So I'm adjusting about a half turn here, which is approximately 50 thousandths added radius here. Okay, I'm beginning to understand why it's a, called a boring bar. This is tedious, but I'm almost there. I'm uh, 1 16th shy of 2 inches, so hopefully this pass will hit it. I'm going about five, maybe 600 RPM and going in very gently. These final shallow cuts are making a much nicer finish in the hole, and I am at 1.986 at this point, so I'm going to try and sneak up on two inches. Um, this is just a practice hole. I don't care if I go a little bit over, but let's just see if I can nail this at exactly two inches. So according to my math, two inches minus 1.986 is 0 0.014 divided by two for the radius is 0 0.007. Okay, so now I have to dial this down by 0 0.007. Let me just get this set up so I know which way I'm going. Going out, which is that direction clockwise. So 0 0.015.67. Hopefully that's it right there. Tighten these down. All right, let's see how it goes. Going for about five or 600 RPM. Final cut. Nice shavings and a nice finished cut. Look at these little rings I'm pulling off of here and beautiful shavings. All right, now the proof is in the pudding. Let's measure that. Oops. Wow, 1993. Okay, well, I might edge out just a little bit more. Okay, hopefully this is the last pass. Okay, let's see how I'm doing here. 2.005. I can live with that. So I've deburred the edges, and I have to say, learning how to use a boring bar is a pretty interesting experience. I've definitely learned that your final cuts have got to be really, really shallow. I think that last cut was about one thou deep and what a nice finish that is. These are all my centering bits and my spotting drill set which are all 120 degree tips and 190 degree tip for the half inch in case I need it. It's, this came with the original set. For my next test I'm taking a half inch spotting drill and then I'm going to go through the deming bits and go all the way out to a one inch one drill at a time one step at a time. <coughs> So here's my silver and Deming drill set. Um, incidentally, 
Silver and Deming was a company that started making these drill bits in the mid-1800s, back when Cartwrights were making cartwheels, and they were using these because they used the small shank that would fit in a universal drill but get you the bigger holes. What's interesting about this set, though, is it's a xylophone. Not quite in tune, but it'll do. So my smallest Deming bit is the 9 16th. So I'm going to start with this one, little WD-40. Jumping to the 5 eighths bit, I'm going to run about 1,000 RPM. Yeah, that works pretty good. Nice cut, very clean, went in easy. And 11 sixteenths. I'm hearing some chattering there, and I don't know whether I need more lubrication or a little slower speed. going about 600 rpm. Let's see how that works for this size cutter. Oh, that sounds a lot better. Uh, except it just stalled my machine again. And 7 8 inch. Alrighty then. That's tearing right through it. This is good. And 15 16 And for the final drill size in the Deming bit set, this is a one inch bit, so I'm going to shoot a little WD on there and let's see how this goes. Well, I didn't like that chattering sound, but the hole looks fine. It's a nice clean cut. Okay, got that cleaned off. And yeah, that's a, that's a pretty nice hole, as it should be with any good drill bit. Thanks for watching. In the description below, you will see links to the products that I've used in this video. You may choose to purchase different ones, but those are the ones that I found to be reasonably affordable. And if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like uh, or subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos. I release a video about once a week. And you can also support me on Patreon. So hope to see you again soon.